Hey folks, George Leoniak here, back with uh, New Geometry. And I uh, just wanna do a kind of a quick video here because I continue to uh, go further into the geohedron. So I think I have maybe three other videos on that. And uh, in the previous one, I was talking about, um, you know, I created this, I drew the, uh, the map of the earth on the, uh, on the geohedron to show where the uh, different vertices are that relate to the, uh, the different uh, grid the, from the Russian grid scientists put together in the 1960s. So uh, I was able to draw it on the geohedron. And in there, there was uh, another form I began to start to recognize we called the Gaiahedron that I'm calling that one. And what I did, I'll show you in this video um, as I get into the slides is for each of these triangular faces, I created a center point on each of these triangular faces and essentially then just connected the vertices, which kind of holds up the rest of, there's, a, there's an inner form basically is what I'm saying within the geohedron, which is its counterpart, which I'm calling the, uh, the Gaiahedron. Uh, so I'm gonna show you kind of, uh, I've got some other built forms here, 3D forms that I'll be discussing and describing. This was the first, model of the Gaiahedron. It's got a very different look to the, uh, the geohedron. Here's a smaller version of that. Um, you know, at first, uh, you know, I'll describe in the, in the video, um, in the slides, um, how this form is morphed into something else a little bit based on uh, where the edges uh, overlap um, <clears throat> the, uh, the geohedron here. So, Anyway, uh, yeah, please join me for this uh, little bit of an adventure here that we're going to go on into the land of uh, new geometry here. And uh, let me share the screen and get going with that. So yeah, there's like a lot of uh, new material that continues to come through. So before I jump on into all that, I just want to make sure I cover this material, which I spent, uh, you know, a, a fair amount of uh, uh, time and energy and interest in, you know, that of course leads to new discoveries. And of course I continue to uh, build off of that, but I don't want to leave this behind because I believe this guy Hedron is a very cool form and addition. So I want to just describe that a little bit more in detail for everyone. Um, so let's see here, we've got the, uh, the geohedron here and, you know, one of the earlier discoveries this week, I almost did kind of a whole separate video on that which I thought was awesome too. Let me just move this out of the way there. Okay. Um, so earlier in the week, I decided to uh, count up, uh, you know, all the vertices, uh, all the angles of all the triangular faces here. So uh, essentially what it adds up to is of course, each triangle is a sum total of uh, 180 degrees when each of those angles are added up. And remember that there's 240 faces on the geohedron. So it's very cool to me that it was kind of like a big discovery uh, revelation that the sum of all the angles of the geohedron was 43,200. Uh, so that was just uh, really cool because 432 is, um, uh, if you're familiar with uh, 432 music compared to 444 hertz, 432 hertz, People believe, according to music theory, that the 432 is a more mathematically consistent uh, uh, starting vibration of the, the A, uh, note A equaling 432 hertz rather than 440. Uh, it's known as the natural tuning of the universe. Uh, you know, you could think of geometry and like these forms that I've been showing here or any type of mandala, it's kind of like a frozen a vibration. I mean, it's it's emitting a vibration, but it's kind of like uh, we're going to show a little bit of cymatics here. But if you were to freeze any one of those cymatic images at any one point in time, it kind of be like this. So you know, the co cool thing for me was to calculate all the angles in this and discover that it's showed up with the number four thirty two. Uh, you know, in harmonic math, harmonic harmonic math, we can kind of take off the last two zeros here and just look at the 432, that somehow this structure, the earth structure here, the geohedron based on the earth grid has some resonance to the 432. Um, so that I thought was very cool. 
just want to add that piece in. And now we're going to go on to uh, describing how the, uh, the dihedron came about and what the process within that was. Earlier, I was kind of trying to decide, well, what should I call the geohedron the gyahedron? Um, I decided that the geohedron was just a better name. It had a lot of more straight line feeling to it. The edges were, uh, you know, a lot more uh, lines where then all of a sudden I put the, the gyahedron together and it just had this awesome kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, counterpart energy to it, this much more uh, spherical organic nature to it compared to the uh, the geohedron structure that I was working with. We'll, we'll find out both of these go hand in hand and the gyhedron has been modified a little bit, but I do love looking at this version of it specifically. So like I said, what I did here, um, this is the uh, over here in the bottom left is the geohedron with the gyhedron underneath. And uh, this is just showing all the little vertice points within the triangles that I just played connect the dots with, meaning that those are touching the surface of this uh, triangular face here, you know? So it's touching the surface of that. And, uh, you know, connect the dots so all of them are touching. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that uh, all those heights are the same. So when we put a sphere around that, it's not going to uh, touch all those vertices but it is gonna to touch each of those interfaces. And then this dihedron form was kind of born out of that from connecting those dots. It's a very uh, classic thing to do with dual forms. So the dual form of the uh, cube, for instance, is the octahedron. And if you put that octahedron, which is the eight-sided form with six vertices, remember this cube has six faces, the octahedron, um, the octahedron here, you know, this octahedron fits right inside this little cube and the six uh, vertices touch the six faces. So that was kind of my idea, my reasoning that I was going on here is, well, I can create the dual form of the geohedron by connecting those inner vertices um, on the interfaces here. And that would give me the rough, the, the rough number of vertices. So the vertices for the gyhedron equal the number of faces. So there's 240 vertices for the gyahedron and 240 faces for the geohedron. Here it is, I just picked it up again um, uh, and uh, showed you it here. But uh, you know, when we're looking at that image, uh, you, you'll notice here, I'll just point it out in this picture, and this is why I had to kind of go back and modify a little bit is when you look at this form, you could maybe see uh, that these are kind of slightly sloped, these hexagon shapes. So any hexagon, you know, regardless, it doesn't have a half 120 degree angle in here, uh, but it's got six sides, right? So we got a bunch of six sided shapes kind of following the curvature around to the pentagon on the shape. Now, if you just lay out hexagons flat um, with the, uh, equal sides, they'll never curve in on themselves. You have to introduce a uh, different dimension for some of those faces to start to curve. And that's what the Pentagon structure does at the 12 places that, that the little Pentagon is on this form. It creates the curvature for that to kind of warp around or else it will just be a flat hexagonal matrix. So the Pentagon is very important for this curvature. At least that's what I discovered through my exploration of this. But with this, uh, this little uh, hexagon in the middle and this one over here, they have to accommodate for that curvature because I just placed them here flat. So as I show you in the next few slides a little bit further on, you'll see that that now has a little bend in it. So it will meet the curvature to match over here. And that's why I'm saying the gyhedron has changed a little bit. Although I do love the, just the kind of organic nature of this one. It's a very slight curvature, hardly noticeable. It's only like in a degree, uh, less than a degree of curve for each of those. Um, and I missed it the first time around and when I was uh, transposing this from the drawings, because I do this all from hand drawings in an app, a drawing app, and then I figure out how to do it. So everything you see that I'm creating here isn't done with like a CAD program. I can't rotate things around easily, uh, like with a CAD, uh, you know, image and just morph it around, you know, 
create it and then move it around, I have to transpose the whole image to a new view and figure out all the sacred geometry in order to draw it from that perspective. Um, so, you know, when I first saw the, uh, the guy Hedron and built it, this one here, uh, and looked at it from uh, this angle here, I was like, wow, it reminded me of a turtle shell right away, you know, and I was picturing the turtle shell and the, uh, the hexagon structure here in the middle, uh, which starts to morph into more of a pentagon shape here as it's following that curvature. I mean, the turtle shell is a beautiful demonstration of these hexagon plates. There are 13 of them, and that's the 13 central, um, central parts of the gyhedron here with one in the center. And then we've got 13 around here, one, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 main little uh, segments of the turtle shell. So I thought of it right away. And of course, the story of Turtle Island the, uh, in, in North America here, uh, the Iroquois nation uh, in the Great Lakes region of native peoples here uh, have a, a, a creation myth of the uh, creation story of the Turtle Island being the uh, connected to the earth. Uh, there's a story that the muskrat swam down and started clumping mud to create the earth on top of the turtle's back. And it very much actually fits this kind of uh, higher tech geometry I'm doing here. Because uh, if you can just, well, just move back a few slides, this guy hedron structure is the 240 vertices that are actually holding up, let's just say, uh, from below, it's the inner structure of the geohedron, because all these vertices are holding up each of these triangular faces. And of course, the geohedron, as I've demonstrated here, represents the earth grid. And now the gyahedron, much like the turtle island, the turtle uh, with the muskrat clumping the mud on top of each of those little uh, vertices, to build out the rest of the surface of the earth, um, you know, the, the, the land and of course the, the water that's on here too. So uh, that's just, a, it was a cool uh, kind of just a connection through the visual uh, image of the turtle shell that I've had in my mind and just seeing how it overlaps with the 13, uh, 13 central portion of the gyhedron from that perspective. And I decided to uh, look into the turtle a little bit more while I was looking at some images of that and uh, came across an image that had the uh, cymatics uh, and some cymatic images uh, that are being displayed here. This image showed how the turtle was very similar, uh, turtle shell was very similar to some of the images being produced here, which are also very similar to this guy, Hedron shape. We're starting to have the hexagon and the pentagon geometry showing up in some of these uh, cymatic images relating to the uh, turtle shell and, but I believe the guy, Hedron too, because like I'm saying, it's whenever you start to curve the hexagon surface, it's gonna curve in a way that is going to uh, warp the edges of the hexagon until they become pentagons. So, um, yeah, so the, uh, the turtle shell, did I have anything more on the gyhedron? I don't think so. I think that's about it for that. It's just some neat synchronicities of kind of coming, coming together and seeing how these things kind of relate. Uh, and just thinking about the stories and the uh, creation stories from different cultures and seeing how there may be some uh, incredible uh, understanding of some uh, hidden wisdom within structures and geometry that are part of those stories that uh, you, know, you can correlate to some of these discoveries here. Uh, so here was another kind of uh, discovery that kind of just blew me away with the uh, guy Hedron uh, in the first view of it. And it's going to, this, this will continue on into the next version I'm going to show you in a second because I, it's slightly modified, as I had said before. But, uh, you know, we're basically looking at here uh, a segment of this one, two, three, four 
from the central hexagon to the next largest hexagon to the smaller hexagon here, all the way down to this pentagon shape. And you know, to me, this is kind of like the magic that discover, you know, happens in discovery. You don't, I don't go in with measurements set up beforehand when I've been doing these drawings. In fact, the program I'm using doesn't tell me what the numbers are, uh, which is unfortunate because I'd love to just be able to calculate the numbers. I have to do that all afterwards. Um, so I, I didn't expect this to happen, but when I decided to make the measurement of this little pentagon face that's inside the geohedron, because those are touching the inner vertices of the gyahedron, so that central pentagon, we have it touching the, uh, uh, we, if I create that as a one inch edge, so that all the other inch, edges are one inch, amazingly what happens uh, in there is that this edge becomes the square root of two. And that is just a really uh, important uh, sacred mathematic number. Uh, that's of course the diagonal of the cube. Uh, or diagonal of the square face. So geometers use this number a lot. And amazingly to me, what happened with this one inch here, as I worked my way around, that this hexagon here uh, has a square root of two as one edge, and the other edge is uh, phi, 1.618. And so that means that this hexagon here, it, it's displaying 120 degree angle as well, because it didn't change its shape. Like this hexagon over here has 111.1 degree angle, which I thought was cool. The one, 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 um, and 124.4 degree angle. But this one maintained 120 degrees, which of course every hexagon has 120 degrees. And these uh, opposite edges, um, opposing edges are phi and root two. Uh, so, I just thought it was a real nice blend and harmonization between uh, phi and the square root of two. And I, I just want to show you how I kind of verified this because like in my program that I'm working with, I'm not able to uh, get these measurements so I calculate them afterwards, but I don't even need to do that. I don't have to do any of the calculations uh, with the calculator at all because all, all I need to do is create a square right, that has the one inch edge, which is representative of this pentagon that has a one inch edge. So I do a square and then from this, uh, divide this line in half. And then I'm just gonna create uh, a diagonal, which this is half of the square root of five, right? So that's 1.118. One, uh, uh, and then swing that down and then that will give me the phi measurement one, and this is the 0.618. So I just swing that down. And now I can take this measurement, right? And verify, this is what these double little two tick marks mean in the program. If I measure the length of that and then measure the length of this, that tells me that that is the same length as this. So, you know, that, that's a one inch edge. That's the 1.618. Uh, so now I know that. And even now within the same square, what I'll do is I'll take this root two, um, which is the diagonal on a square face. So that's 1.414. And then I'll just do the same thing, measure this and compare it to this length here. And that's what this three little tick marks, if you're able to see those, represent the three little tick marks, meaning that those two edges are equal. So you don't even really need to do any number crunching here. All you have to do is just know the geometry of how to create these shapes and compare them in the geometry. And you don't have to do any calculations. It's just visually apparent that these are the right dimensions. Um, so I thought that was just a real, like I said before, very cool way to show that the harmonization between phi and the square root of two coming together in this gyahedron form. Totally unknown to me that that would show up like that, but did. Now, I just, we're going to do the version of this gyahedron modified because 
Um, you know, I, like I said, I do really like the uh, the look of this other version without segmenting these hexagon faces. I just want to point out that the hexagon faces that we're going to be um, creating a division in here are not the one that I just showed you here. It's this one and this one needs to have a, uh, a little bit of a slight bend to that hexagon face and this one to accommodate that curvature that I was describing uh, earlier. So that's why this, this shape has been modified. But this hexagon, the 120 degree angle, and of course the pentagon, those two stay the same in this. So that is the pentagon that has the one inch edge. This is the hexagon here that has the square root of two and the phi based one. And all I've done here now is had to just bend this in slightly uh, by like less than a degree angle. So it's like 179 degrees or something like that, uh, that this has to be tilted in just a bit to meet in the center for all these little bit for both those shaped hexagons. It does create kind of a very cool uh, lattice type of effect. And this is it now in the geohedron here. And uh, same underlying vertices, nothing's changed for that. The only thing that has changed is that slight angle. And believe it or not, I, I'll show you this uh, in more detail. I did, uh, I'll might as well stop the share for a sec. I did go then and then create this one just to accommodate for that slight angle, which is just almost imperceptible tilt, but that is, uh, it, uh, it's gonna prevent that little bit of um, puckering, I guess is the best way to describe it to these faces uh, that are just slightly start to warp. The paper is very forgiving in that little warp that's happened. I think you could see it right there. There's a little bit of warping that's happening to that face because I don't have that little bit of angle bend in there. Uh, but now this one is a little bit more of a complex structure. It's changed the number of vertices and edges. Um, so it's still the, the, I mean, the vertices, excuse me, are the same. There's still uh, 240 vertices. The number of edges and the number of faces have changed. Uh, so I'll just continue on and show you a little bit more of that as well. Okay, we're back. Um, okay, so the Gaihedron originally had uh, the 122 faces, uh, and now it has 302 faces because you're segmenting that little little triangle, the little equilateral triangle that's created. I mean, it's not even equilateral. It's uh, this triangle into three separate pieces. And it also has uh, now a accommodation of another 180 edges on top of that, because now we've got a three to each of these triangles here. So we got 540 edges on that one. Um, you know, I, I'd be cool to hear in the comments, like which form you resonate with more, because, you know, the only reason I went back and did this was, of course, that's bending the 240 vertices haven't changed. Uh, it's kind of keeping it more uh, geom geometrically uh, organized and correct, but you know, uh, like a surface of a, a bubble or something like that has a, a curvature or it, it kind of loses a little bit of the organic nature of the previous version I was showing you and kind of adds a quite a bit more lines um, to it. So let, let me know how do you, you resonate with this version of it uh, compared to the other one. So, here are the two, uh, two of the views that I'm showing you here that are different from the orientation that I was showing you here, which kind of has this at the center, the, the diamond shape or the, the squished hexagon shape in the center. This one now is from the uh, pentagon uh, face on the top and here's the hexagon uh, shape. Now, remember, this is the hexagon that is the phi and the root two edges, as well as the 120 degree uh, angle. And I just think there's some uh, real beauty to that because we're kind of combining in that hexagon there three really important uh, uh, values of three polygons 
that come together in this hexagon. One is the square root of two for the short edge, which is part of the square. And then we have for the five, the, the, the pentagon shape, we have the 1.618. And of course, the pentagon is loaded with uh, phi ratios from one to 1.618. So we're including that fiveness in this. And then we maintain the uh, angle of a hexagon at 120 degrees, even though we have three different, uh, two different edge lengths, but now we've got uh, three uh, shapes kind of coming together in this, or at least three values that are associated with those shapes coming together to create this part of the geohedron. So, you know, I, the explorations went a little bit further and um, I'll put this component in here too, because I decided to look at this shape here, uh, the, the gyhedron with the segmented triangles. And I said, you know, th there's probably another form that I can make that just accounts for that, uh, for those, so each of these triangular faces are kind of pushed up because that little difference there, I said, I probably can make a form that just is gonna account for that vertice and keep these other vertices um, on their own of the triangle and break that gyhedron form into two forms which come together to create the one form, but it just made things a little more simple so I, I'll show you how I went with this. So this is all the forms together. This is, uh, this blue one is the new form that I'm about to show you. So beyond the gyohedron, we got the geohedron, the gyohedron, and now two unnamed forms that are coming into play. They are this blue one. And uh, this is all within the geohedron, gyohedron all together in this. And I'll show you now that the, um, the this new form, which is accounting for the vertices in the center of the, uh, the stars points. So the geohedron has uh, these stars. Let me just go back to the very first image. You see there's a, a pentagon here and now it's got these star points coming off it. So it's a five pointed star. And the vertices that I am gonna create this new form that I'm talking about are just gonna be from the inner points of the star for all the stars on here. So we're just gonna take those points rather than all the other ones. And I think it's uh, 60 vertices here. Let me see. Yeah, 60 vertices. So we got 60 vertices that are just for those star points that I'm showing here. And then the remainder of those are gonna be now just these points, which are gonna be part of the other triangular faces on the geohedron. So I know this is kind of maybe a little complex, uh, maybe more of the information than you need or want. Uh, maybe, you know, I'm hoping you're finding this interesting. Uh, you know, I'd like to see some of these other people's eyes on them and see if there's uh, interest in this. I think the geohedron in and of itself definitely fits over the earth grid 100% uh, one for one. And I think that's a fascinating form. This guy hedron structure, I think is in there. And now I'm just refining this a little bit more to discover what other forms It's kind of like a Russian doll type thing. I mean, I could keep going into this and finding new forms and I'm kind of like in, in, in new terrain here totally uh, altogether. So now here's just that form all, all on its own. Um, and this is it here. And uh, I, it, it just so happened, and I love when this sort of thing happens, that, uh, you know, I didn't plan for this. And, but it always kind of is like, wow, you're kind of like on the right track with your observation. So I bought these, uh, these spheres, these little uh, plastic spheres a while ago, because I wanted to make all the platonic solids fit inside this. I think it's 5.5 uh, inches or something like that. And I didn't even like, when I made the template to build this, this other form in here, I didn't even like measure it at all. I just printed it up. I put it into, print it up, just scaled it to the size of the sheet of paper and printed it. And I made it of the different six pieces of paper because I you know, put it all together cut it out and everything. 
it's like, you know what? It looks almost about the same size as the platonic solids that I put in those spheres. And I put it in there and it was just, it's absolutely perfect fit. You know, the seam goes all the way around, no problem. And then it doesn't even wiggle at all in there. I mean, meaning that every vertice on here, all 60 vertices in here are in contact. And it was like no planning because I don't even know what the measurement is from one side to the other. Like I'm still trying to discover what that is in the program by doing those measurements. I don't know what it is, but I do know if I want to reproduce this, all I have to do is just reprint that template at that size and put it in the sphere. And then, you know, people can have Christmas ornaments and I can be mass producing Christmas ornaments and I don't even have to discover what that, uh, that measurement is. But anyway, I'll, I'll bust it. I'll take it out of here and just show you a little bit more. Um, just a little bit closer up of this one. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, this, this form is now slightly modified. The, the new version of this, I've modified this slightly. And this is going to be my next video that I've already been on to. It's going to elaborate on this because this opened up a whole new spectrum for me, but this is how I got there. Uh, you know, essentially it's a, it's a truncated icosahedron I discovered, and I'll be discussing that in the, in the next video. But this is, the, this is the form that's part of the gyahedron, and it's, it's creating 60 of those uh, vertices on there as I separated the gyahedron out. And those, those vertices that I'm showing you are these vertices right here. Those are the ones that are part of those star points on the gyahedron, which I'll show you here. On the gyahedron, I mean, the geohedron, that is the uh, star point I'm showing here. So there's the star. That's that point, that point, that point, that point, and that point. So those are the, uh, the points that, of course, these are all different scale, but those are going to correspond to these five pentagon structure. All right. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's uh, it's like a Russian doll type of effect. You know, you can kind of see how these all these things type of fit together, and you know, it's the geometry just is leading the way. So when I make discoveries that uh, you know the ang the 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 phi based edges and the root two edges, uh, that all just adds to um, that the, this uh, it's falling into some sort of sacred geometric principles and sacred geometry. It's following the sacred geometric blueprint that's underlying these structures. Okay, I'm going to go back to the uh, screen share here. Uh, so that was uh, these. These are these unnamed forms. I'll show you them at, after these. But I just kind of now going to do a little bit of the recap here of the two main forms that uh, I've been discussing earlier was the geohedron, which I've done quite a bit of videos on and did 122 vertices, 240 faces, 360 edges, the sum of the angles is the 43,200 relating to that harmonic of 432 Hertz. Um, I decided to do this uh, because I was looking through, uh, I remembered in uh, Robert Grant's book, uh, the, the Philomath book. I checked that out and he's got a little section in there where he's comparing the, uh, the vertices of uh, you know, the common platonic solids and dividing those by 720. So for instance, a cube, when you add up all the angles of a cube, which each angle has a 90 degree square face, right? You add all those up, you'll add up to 2,160. And if you divided that by six, divided by 720, he was doing that for all these forms to kind of find uh, some patterns related to them. So when I divided the geohedron by that, it's it basically, it comes up to 60, which is cool too, because it, that relates to uh, the multiple, ba the base 60 mathematics, which I was talking about in that pentagon hexagon fusion earlier. So this is the 60th uh, part of the, his sequence that he was working on. At least the geohedron is the way I see it. The gyahedron here, uh, I've described just quite a lot, 240 vertices, 302 faces, 540 edges. 
Um, and that now, uh, I did the mathematics on that and broke it up as well. Um, I forgot what that came up to, maybe 115 uh, uh, for when you divide the sum total of the angles by 120. It, it didn't correspond as awesomely to this 432. Uh, it was like 808, I think, uh, 80,820, something like that. Uh, okay, so we've got the uh, gyhedron, and I'm just calling these kind of the sudden daughter forms here. And uh, I was trying to get a little fancy here, and I uh, decided to research the Gaia Greek children of Gaia that, you know, she had a lot of children, apparently, some with even her own kids. Um, but she had two children that were hers that, uh, you know, she just had had no father, basically. They were the sky and the uh, water, the, the sky, sea and mountains. Uh, the names didn't really fit well for me. So I'm just calling these the sudden daughter forms of the Gaiahedron because they're essentially in the Gaiahedron. Uh, so it, here, these two are meant to go over top of one another. Now here, this form, remember, this had that little raised triangular spot in the middle, which had a vertice in the middle of each of these blue triangles with the red edge here. Uh, now that's been removed here. Those 60 vertices have been taken out to form their, create their own form over here. And now this is what we have for this uh, other form here uh, on the left. So this one now has got 180 vertices, 182 faces, 360 edges, while this one has the 60 vertices, the 32 faces, and the 90 edges for that form on the right, son and daughter forms. So from the geohedron, we've uh, kind of blossomed into, you know, three other forms. These two forms here make the, up the gyohedron, which all connect the G, to the geohedron. And my next step after I complete the, the next video of kind of where I'm going with this is trying to experiment with this. I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off, but what I'd like to do is uh, connect the geohedron shape. And remember the geohedron, if you've seen the previous videos is this fusion of the platonic solids, five of each platonic solid, uh, five cube, five octahedron, five uh, tetrahedron in that as well as the five cube octahedron plus a dodecahedron and icosahedron, they all fuse to make the geohedron. So that's all on the internal structure. Now you could have all the vertices of this gyahedron just touching the inner surface of the geohedron. But what I like to do is um, make the vertices of the gyahedron on the inside bring those up to the surface of the geohedron. So now they all touch the sphere of the uh, earth. And now we've just introduced a whole nother bunch of vertices. So basically what we would be doing here is taking the vertice of the gyohedron below, raising them up, just inflating it out a little bit. So now all those vertices touch the surface. And then we would be subdividing every triangle on the geohedron the 240 into three, and that would now create a 720 side face shape. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try and do. It's really complicated with techniques I'm using. So, uh, but I'm gonna give it a go at some point after I cover the next set of slides that I'll be talking about next, next, uh, next presentation, what's gonna be related to a modified version of this, which I'm super psyched to, to present as well. So, uh, you know, here's just a kind of, you know, uh, there's just multiple ways to uh, engage with this. I love to build the forms. I love to work with the geometry and just figure out how to create something like that and all the math that's involved in that. And then of course, there's these other parts that um, of the, the creating, you know, it doesn't have to be like a Monet or like some Da Vinci drawing or anything like that. Adding some color and some life to these images uh, I, I'm not a, a I'm not a trained artist by any means, or even a trained uh, math student in geometry. But I just find that it, it uh, all accumulates to activate all sides of the, the the relationship to the form, 
uh, by adding the color to it like this and just seeing what it looks like when um, I shade in the different areas with the different colors. And uh, it's just another way for me to connect more fully with the form because, you know, as you're creating that and coloring it in or just cutting out little pieces of paper over and over again and taping them all together and then working in the program, it's just kind of activating all areas and you get all these type of uh, intuitive insights of how this relates to that when you're just kind of like working, uh, like if you're, if you're a sewer or a knitter or a weaver or like to go running or anything like that, just the types of things, the insights you get, something you're working on to take that time to just uh, enjoy uh, the artistic side of it. So, um, okay, that's kind of the most, um, mostly what I'm gonna do with the guy, he, guy Hedron at this point. My next thing, like I said, I like to do, I don't know if you'll see a video because I have a feeling it will be kind of challenging to create that uh, compound of the guy Hedron and the geohedron to create the 720 faces. Um, but I, I uh, really like this little series on the Gaia Hedron, Geohedron. And uh, I hope you have too. Uh, so thanks for watching. And uh, I'm still really uh, motivated to produce this Geohedron printed like this, uh, you know, and getting more interest in uh, more, uh, more people aware of this and seeing it and you know, still thinking of trying to figure out ways to get a template built of this that's easy that kids or adults can make. So if any of you have any technical skills or interested in this, you know, continue to reach out and contact people, uh, contact me if you'd like to uh, follow up on that, of working together on some project that can bring this out wider. Um, and, you know, like I said, the next step for me, like with this is also to just see if I can get the geohedron points to come out a little bit, gyahedron points to come out. And then you're gonna be adding a bunch of new vertices to this surface of the earth. And it's even gonna be projected more uh, like a sphere because then you'll have uh, how many vertices total uh, on uh, 362 vertices all over the surface of the earth and connecting all those points. So remember a lot of these uh, locations connect to uh, a lot of sacred sites. Um, that are already previously mapped on here. We're gonna be adding a whole bunch more. I've already added a few more with just the geohedron, how this was constructed. Now, if we fill out these spots, who knows, you might even find a point real close to your house. Um, so anyway, remember this whole thing that I'm doing here is definitely about just awakening more consciousness to the earth, connecting with the earth in more ways than just focusing on this geometry, but seeing the sacredness in the geometry and all the things around us and in the beauty of the flower, um, or the beauty of a sunset or sun, uh, sunrise uh, in the water, uh, connecting with all those elements that are around us um, just awakens us up and, and, and it awakens that whole earth at the same time. So um, yeah, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching again and much love until next time. Uh, have a great rest of your uh, week.